what I usually do is to use the wait action because it's easy to time. I set it to something like uh, with 0 0.5 second, I get back my max speed from the variable. Save the max speed. Ah, what is the name? Save max speed. I'm not in the proper. Uh, you'll see that in the cat's video, but I need to be on the same scope as my uh, my variable to be able to use it. Up. I can here and here is not. This is influenced by the weight, but not this one. So after 0 0.5 seconds, I will get back my former max speed. And this is not happening after the 0.5 seconds, it's instantly happening since it's not in the same event. So, yeah. Oh, I killed it. How so? What? <laughs> what? What? What, what? <laughs> That's uh, weird. Oh, right. Thank you, uh, cat. Oh? oh, yeah. It shouldn't be in the collision event. Okay, so here I'm knocked back and I retrieve my former max speed afterward. I'm knocked back a little bit too much to my taste, so let's set it to 600. You see here the, the advantage of having variables, you can change them very easily. What I usually do for a knockback as well is to uh, is to set my um, to, s to um, disable control I usually disable the control during knockback since you are knocked back you are not in control of yourself somehow and here I enable it afterward and I will wait just the open 3 Oh, not disabled, sorry. <laughs> if I disable, I can't set a speed. I will say ignore input. Start ignoring input. Stop ignoring input. Which means if you are going left and you, s you keep pushing left on your enemy, you will be knocked back anyway. You won't be able to, to fight the force that is knocking you back which I think is a better than a better effect and here I will add another little uh, effect which is a flashing effect it's another behavior which has no properties but, sh but allows you to trigger a flashing effect whenever you want and I will trigger player st flash for one second and with uh, and uh, it will flash on and off every uh, 0 0.1 second so here I have my flashing happening I've been hurt and my stomping is working so we have basically we have patrolling enemies stomping and hurting with knockback that's all you need for basic basic enemy system. I will just add something a little bit better than this to show you health. I will just give you a little health, uh, health uh, gauge. Um, 32 by 32, no, it can be a little bit tiny. Height, height, height. Uh, 
8. Okay. Here, and push this in the HUD. And what you want is something that extend from the left. So you want to have your origin on the left, and your uh, HUD will will do something like like this. Okay. So uh, you want uh, you want to set the maximum size of your HUD before you start your uh, your layout. So you say you know, okay, that is one hundred percent HP. What you want also is to know what is the value of your maximum HP because uh, this value will change. So you want your HP max, and then you have your uh, your initial size. What represent what uh, size it is when you you are at HP max. You will save this maximum size to your HP sprite because it can change as well. Bar max size. You'll do all this, uh, all this in start of layout. HP bar set value max size to self dot width, and then your HP. You have all the information you need to display your HP in your with your HP bar. So you just need a little calculation. You know that when you have no health at all, you are at zero in width. You don't see any HP bar anymore. When you are at 100 health, you have self dot max size. That's what you have. So now you know you need a percentage. The percentage of your health is the current health of the player divided by the player's HP max. And there's a nifty little function that if you give him a starting point, an ending point, and a percentage, it will give you the current position between your starting and your ending point according to the percentage. That's what is called love. Here you see my health is diminishing until I will reach zero. And it will even go underneath because here I have a negative health. So you want also your health to stay between 0 and uh, um, HP max. To do this, I will show you a new another function which has a name you can easily remember. It's clamp. You will clamp yourself HP to between 0, the minimum, and a maximum, which is HP max. And you push this here. So here, your HP can't go underneath 0 and can't go over uh, HP max, over 100. It's a safety uh, event here. I'm touching in the enemy and I'm still at 0. Now the last thing you need is dying again. So the condition is really easy. If your HP is equal to zero, you die. HP equals zero, call death. Oh, I have a god mod. That's kind of neat. But I will remove it for now because I don't need that. It was an example last time. 
I will save this. So now you can die if you have a HP to zero. But you'll see if I die like this, it's a bit like uh, life in a way. I will die. I will stay dead forever, and I can't move my character because it's keep being spawned back to the beginning. It keep doing that because my H HP stay equal to zero. You have to be very careful about condition that stays right, stays true. Here my HP is equal to zero. I die. So this is executed. I'm respawned. Uh, the checkpoint is considered as well. And then since I'm my HP is to zero again, I die and again and I die and I die. each tick, each time it's evaluated, the death function is called. I can't move from the respawn position. So you have when you respawn, you have to set the HP back to. Uh, to what you want, it could be a small, uh, a small life. Maybe when you die, you get back a tiny life. I think that's what I uh, do in Neon Platformer. Or you can set it back to HP max. I set it uh, to a lower value in uh, Neon Platformer, so you you like to get some uh, HP, some uh, health. Uh, some health pickup, but uh, <laughs> my uh, my game is uh, is too hard anyway. Uh, HP max, what? Happened? Yeah. So now, if I die, okay, I'm respawn back to. Um, to 100 HP and I can move. Also, what I think I will do is set back. Uh, maybe I think I can't stop the flashing. Mm -mm -mm. So we'll see. We'll see. For now, it's working. Uh, you'll see if you want uh, to. Uh, how you can avoid uh, the player to flash again when uh, it's respawned. Uh, there's some ways, there's some ways. But, uh, okay, we have enemies, we are enough back, we can die the third dumb way. And, uh, okay, I think I'm done with enemies. I will go switch to animation. Is there any question? Let's see. I can access that play object must be top uh, no accessing. Uh, but you shouldn't see it and go the site code for me. Oh yeah, okay. I guess there's not a way to choose which object are snapping to the green. No no. Either all or nothing exactly. Because I want to mirror to uh, yeah yeah. Everything is snapping. I could make my snap grid uh, okay. <laughs> le 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 er. uh, le funny uh, You can use the stop flash. Oh, oh, there's a stop flash. Okay. So uh, yeah, we'll do this as well. Stop flash. Oh yeah, indeed. And I can also do something like uh, just in case uh, stop ignoring input. Just uh, in case uh, this didn't yet kick, uh, kick but uh, zero, 0 0.3 seconds is uh, kind of okay. No, we don't need this. Just stop the flashing is good enough. Oh, I don't know. You can also set the player's vector x to 0. Oh, what I could do is uh, if here, if here, uh, my HP is to zero. I can avoid doing all this as well. Oh yeah, I can do this. Let's do this like this. Uh, instance variable HP different to zero. But after 
the HP has been uh, lowered. I think the warning is just uh, is, ju is a false warning, but just to be sure.